that unmet so many disconnected people and searching souls in one place. The healing powers and high energies what Bali is known for got so commercialized and lost its value. The locals are looking at you as a walking wallet every second trying to sell you on things that you absolutely don't need. Oh yeah, I nearly forgot. There is a lot of 20 year olds who proclaim themselves as a coach here. And yet, I love it here in Bali. I'm enjoying every single minute here and considering extending my stay. I saw bloggers on Instagram getting enlightened and transmitting messages like Bali has changed me. I did this spiritual practice and it was so powerful. Nothing like I ever experienced before. Bali has this special energy and I'm a different person here. Add to it paradise looking places and amazing food and I was sold. Bali has been on my mind for four years for the major card because it was marketed so well to me. I came here for its spirituality. I wanted to feel what all those bloggers felt and also get enlightened. Let's see what really happens. I'm going to discuss seven topics. Nightlife, yoga, food, massage, surfing, spirituality, and hospitality. And yes, I'm aware that the sound of the ocean is a bit louder than what we would like to. But hey, let's take it as a meditation practice. I uploaded subtitles to compensate for it, so make sure you turn them on if my voice gets too quiet. Nightlife. For two weeks I was in Changu, Seminya, Kankuta. These are very party places, especially Seminyak. People I met there are fairly superficial. I remember I shared with someone that I'd like to go to bed early and wake up early, and they didn't get it. With another person I shared that uh, the area where my villa is, and they went like, oh, this is so far from all the party places. Please don't come at me saying that there are more mindful and spiritual people in these areas. Sure, there are, but the majority, the average crowd, is like what I described. So, my verdict, if you want nightlife, then go to Seminyak, it's a great place. Kuta is literally dead, Changu has some party areas, but it cannot compete with Seminyak. Yoga. I went to a few yoga schools like Yoga Barn, Intuitive Flow and a few more in Kuta, Seminyak and Changu. I got surprised as to how disconnected people are. After the practice, after the practice is over, they rush to go home or to go to their next destination. They don't stay and chat with other participants. It felt like as if they were not on holidays, but their day was filled with work appointments and they were so busy. I remember coming here thinking, oh, I'll for sure meet some like-minded people at yoga practices or at other spiritual practices. Uh-huh. Well, I met a few when I initiated contact, but as a rule, no one stayed after the practice to chat. It's hard to get my message across in the video, but you just feel it, you just sense that people are rather closed off and they're not open to talking. They're like minding their own business, they don't look at you, they are not interested, they're not open. Or maybe they are so insecure that, that they are afraid to even look up and look up at the world. I don't know, but this is the vibe that I got. What I like about yoga in Bali is not much about teachers or teaching style or techniques. I cannot say that any teacher here is so outstanding that I would like to visit their class again. You know, sometimes you meet a teacher and you get so connected with him or her that you'd like to attend only their classes and you're like specifically looking where they're gonna teach so you can attend their class. No, I didn't have it in Bali. But what I had is I just love the settings. Imagine doing yoga in a sort of jungle environment, right? You look through the window and it's all green and wild. This is what I thought was so inspiring and so cool and managed to put me in the right state. My verdict is come to Ubud and give it a go. It's a nice experience, but don't have your hopes up and don't expect anything life-changing. Food. I like cute cafes on the beach. Food here is incredible, especially in Seminyak and Changu. It's like you go to any place and it's gonna be delicious and you will have a variety to choose from. 
I don't know why, but in Ubud I like the food a bit less than in Seminyak and Changu. Most of the food I tried in Ubud and I went to those, you know, places recommended by bloggers. The food there was was good, but it was average. It was nothing like too memorable or extremely delicious that I'd like to come back to. Also, I got very surprised that they had sugar pretty much everywhere, even to smoothies. I got completely caught off guard when I felt crystals of sugar on my teeth while drinking a smoothie. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Talking about a smoothie. Here you go. <laughs> so because I don't want any sugar in my smoothie, today I explicitly ask to please not add any sugar or honey in my drink. No sugar, no honey, and it feels very good. Oh, and what's super nice here is that pretty much any place, like I'd say maybe 80% of places would have a matcha latte. I love matcha, I'm really obsessed. My verdict is, for good, healthy and delicious food, come to Seminyak or Changu. Massage. In Seminyak I have the best massage of my life. For the rest, don't expect too much. They usually don't have great technique, but it's still nice and relaxing. And to me, it's good enough and it was definitely worth it. But I'm a simple girl. If they can apply some pressure and give me a deep tissue massage, I'm already over the moon. By the way, here I tried a hot stone massage and full hand massage for the first time. I just finished the full hand massage. First time tried it. It was good. It was a nice experience. So for the hot stone massage, it was pleasant and hot. <laughs> um, but I would not become a regular client. And for the forehand massage, it was also good, but I think one good skillful masseur is sufficient. My verdict is, if you are coming here just for massage, then maybe choose Thailand or find a professional masseur in your city. But if you are coming here with another purpose and massage is just a side type of thing, then yeah, definitely go for it. Why not? It's nice, relaxing, pleasant and cheap. Surf. Oluvatu is paradise for surfers. I'm not sure how good it is for beginners, but I'm going there in a few weeks and I can update you afterwards. But I fell in love with this place and I genuinely think that it's an amazing place for confident surfers. I was in the surf camp for a week and they brought us to surf in Seminyak, Changu and Sanu. If I had to do the lava again, I wouldn't have joined the surf camp, but I would have hired a private instructor instead. Because I could just not really resonate with the majority of the crowd there and that took away from the experience. They were in their early 20s and they just wanted to take off places from their bucket list and um, get drunk and party. So I could not particularly relate. My version. Valley is incredible for surfing known for surfing for a reason and it justified. But if you want to learn how to surf, maybe don't join a surf camp but hire a private instructor instead so you'll get a better value for money. Spirituality. I can say a lot about it. The first night I arrived in the booth I went to shadow dance at Yoga Barn and it was a very powerful experience. It's like a static dance but it goes deeper and it reaches the darkest sides of your personality. The DJ was genuine and authentic and I could feel it through his music, so it was very powerful and I got out of it exactly what I needed. I got a few experiences like this, raw, authentic, genuine, and they were facilitated by the most beautiful souls and I deeply, really deeply enjoyed it. Did it change me? Was it this magic pill that healed all the areas of my life? No, but it was most genuine and insightful and helped me make some steps in the direction I want to go. But then there were also experiences that I thought it's just such a BS. I tried Milukat, this water purification ceremony to cleanse your body, soul and mind. In Bali they are mostly Hindu, so they believe in past lives and Melukat is also to cleanse your past lives. I'm not Hindu, so I was hesitant whether I should join because to me 
it just kind of looks a little bit funny seeing tourists praying for gods that they don't even know. You can see in their eyes that they're confused and they're not sure what to what to do. They're like sitting in this prey pose, but like they're confused. <laughs> so I did not want to be one of those. I did not join the land ceremony, but I did join only the water uh, ceremony because I wanted to try and see what it feels like and if it's I don't know if it's gonna affect me in any way at all. I had some expectations. I know it's like bad to have expectations, but I kind of went into it with an idea that it's a holy place, so I'm probably gonna sense the spiritual and holy energy at this place. No, I haven't sensed anything except for trade and shakedown. I had to pay at every single step of the way. Entrance fees, donations, sarong, lockers, every single thing. I, I think they saw me as a walking wallet and every step I made they were like, you need to pay. I even had to pay for the photos, so I asked someone to take a picture and a video of me on my phone and when I asked them just politely in English, they were like, sorry, we don't speak English. But then when I mentioned that I'm going to tip them, they were like, oh, okay, we, we are happy to help. I also had to pay for the guide and, oh gosh, that's quite a story. The guide there was as if I was guiding someone in an Orthodox church, okay? It's like very generic knowledge that just someone knows about if he or she was raised there. Better than nothing, but still not good enough to pay for. The commercial side of the experience was so dominant that it did not leave any space for the spiritual and sacred one. Another example. After the shadow dance, a girl came up to me and out of nowhere she said, I can channel things. And she apparently conducts ceremony. It was something like sensual tea ceremony or something like that. It looked really sketchy. One of those stories when a 20 year old comes to Bali and regards herself as a healer or coach. My verdict. Just like in any place, you can find good spiritual experiences that will genuinely benefit you. But there are also lots of practices that are just weird. There is a lot of charlatans here and please be aware of it. Don't be misled by shiny and rose-colored experiences of bloggers who are telling that Bali changed them and it was such a game changer. Everyone needs to come here and experience what they did. I genuinely cannot understand how you can portray this image of the island that it's just so healing and everyone who comes here is going to change and is going to become a different person. I think it's so misleading and irresponsible. Of course, there are spiritual practices and places that will help you make steps towards coping with whatever you're going through right now. There is no such a thing as a magic pill that's going to solve all your traumas, insecurities and uh, problems and Bali is not gonna do it either. Hospitality. I felt so welcome in Bali. I know, I said that I felt like people wanted to rip me off, but there were still a lot of genuine, nice, friendly, and very hospitable people. It's like as Viktor Frankl said in his book, Man's Search for Meaning. From all this, we may learn that there are two races of men in this world, but only these two, the race of the decent man and the race of the indecent man. Both are found everywhere. They penetrate into all groups of society. No group consists entirely of decent or indecent people. So, just like everywhere, in Bali there are people who don't care about you, they just want your money and they want to sell you on stuff that you absolutely don't need. But then there are also people who are not indifferent. They want the best for you. They want you to get the best experience. And they want to facilitate that in 
any way they can. By the way, I'm not judging those who wanted to sell me on stuff because I don't know what I would have done had I earned a hundred euros a month. The kindest and the most beautiful and sincere people in Bali, I think they represent the majority at least in my experience. I was staying in a guest house in Nubut and the staff there was the most kind and incredible. They are the most beautiful and pure souls I've ever met. The owner of the place offered me to join a yoga class in Monkey Forest with locals for free. One of the staff, Bayan, offered to move a fridge from one room to another just because I liked another room better. Another man was dropping me off at the rice terrace. Um, I, was, I got stuck in a place with no grab and go jack. It's an app to grab a car, a scooter or food. Like basically there was no grab and go jack in, uh, in this area. And the owner of the place offered to bring me there for a small fee and I wanted to tip him just because I saw how kind, genuine, humble and friendly he was and he refused. So is Bali worth it? To be honest with you, this is not how I view life. To me, any experience is worth it. I'm right now in Gili Air and sometimes in my bungalow there is no running hot water. There are no street lights in the streets leading up to my bungalow and I'm a little bit afraid of the dog, to say the least. <laughs> and because of the low tides, I can only swim in the morning. So it's not the most comfortable experience I've ever had, but to me, it's still worth it. Life is a collection of many experiences, so get adventurous, try new things. Of course, it's good to know what you want and what you don't want, but it's also good to be flexible in your mind and open to, to new things. Explore and decide for yourself if you like it here and take everything I said in this video with a pinch of salt because what I shared is merely my point of view. The same if you hear that someone has such a life-changing experience and everyone needs now to try this practice and go through this. Okay question this, get a little bit skeptical, dive deeper and explore